I did hear from Ross McDonald, who has uh, is in the legislature and isn't able to be here, but he'll probably join by four ish. Great, thanks. So it's um, Thursday, February 25th, 2021, 3.30 o'clock, and this is a subcommittee meeting, the Just Transition Subcommittee meeting for the Vermont Climate Council. Uh, so thank you. We were just doing a little uh, roll call to see if all of our current subcommittee members are here. We have Stu Minter, Chris Campany, myself, Sarah Phillips, uh, Kelly Klein, I see. Uh, we are still awaiting Jennifer Micah. And from staff, we have, I see Liz Shields. Hi, Liz. Abby Willard. Uh, from Ross McDonald from B Trans is a later today. Uh, and we have uh, Director Jane Lazarchak. Um, is there anyone else? from staff or, oh, I think Jennifer has joined us. No, nope, that's Joanna Miller. Never mind. JM, <laughs> trying to follow the initials. Jennifer's um, with us. I see her on my screen. I oh, also okay. want to, there's a couple of members of the public who might, uh, could we ask you all to mute yourselves? There's a little bit of background noise. Um, thank you. And I'll just pipe in and suggest that um, in other meetings, we're starting to ask if members of the public turn off video too. That way, actual subcommittee members can pop up on the screen more frequently. That will help with that. And then, of course, public comment at the end. Yeah, Teams does this weird thing where it shuffles through. You don't see everyone. So, okay, great. So I think we're great. We're ready to get going. So the first thing we'll do, and apologies for the delay in getting this agenda out. Um, I know we are still working on getting into our groove. Um, so the first thing is just to review and approve the agenda or make any adjustments to it. Um, I did create a little space at the beginning for uh, Jane um, and council members to provide any updates from the most recent meeting or the steering committee. Um, and then I think the, the primary purpose of today's meeting is to finalize nominations for our subcommittee. So that's what we'll spend most of today's meeting on. We had uh, suggested on the last meeting that folks uh, go ahead and start thinking or if there were materials um, or resources that could be valued for this subcommittee that they could um, send those to Amanda Carlson who's providing some administrative support to collect. And so we can just check in on that process and then we can set some goals for our next meeting. So um, adjustments to this agenda or thoughts? Yes, Sue. Yeah, I um, um, I wanted to ask uh, the committee if they would be interested, as I am, to maybe spend a little time at the end of the meeting following up on some of the business of the council meeting that um, came up relating to the engagement, public um, outreach and engagement process, and um, particularly this thought that I think uh, Suzanne Young offered for us to uh, consider ways to begin the engagement process sooner than June um, and to really uh, put our heads together with some recommendations for the steering committee. So I'd love for us to spend a little time perhaps at the end. Frankly, at this moment, it feels more important or a priority to what we have currently at 430, looking at the materials for review. So I would like to propose that we do that. And if there's time, discuss um, resources and materials for review. Great, so the proposal is that instead of our 430 agenda item, we, we use that time slot to discuss uh, public engagement strategies. And if we do have additional time, we'll talk about materials today. Otherwise, we'll push those to next week. Any, anyone, any subcommittee members? Does that seem okay? Yeah, thumbs up. For some reason, Jennifer, Micah, I cannot see you. So unless I hear people saying no, I'll assume that's a yes. It's a yes. Okay, great. <laughs> I happen to see all of our members right now, so I'll let you know with my own thumb. I'll do two thumbs if I see everyone else and if I see others that aren't, there you go. There you go. For some reason, I can only see you and Jane and every once in a while, Chris. <laughs> oh, I don't know. Um, okay, we'll just do it. We'll figure it out. 
figure it out. Um, so great. So with that, we'll go ahead and jump in. Um, Jane, take it away. I'll, I'll hand it off to you first to provide some updates. Or Sure. Um, I can be brief and actually one of my updates had to do with public engagement, so I'll table that um, and look forward to that conversation towards the end of the meeting. I just wanted to let you all know first and foremost that I know there's been some glitches on like process, administration process and um, meeting minutes um, as well as agendas, um, all of what is expected of subcommittees and what you can, what you can in return expect of from support. And so I just wanted to let you know that um, Melissa and I are working sort of on a cheat sheet on, that pertains to public um, meetings and the public meeting rules um, that will provide to all the subcommittees um, by next week that will talk through what's required, what is um, in statute, what's, you know, what's best management with respect to process. And so hopefully that will help. Um, and I do just want to put out there because I know, especially with your with your committee, we've had some back and forth and use this time to welcome. Um, one of the things we've been thinking about is how best and um, most succinctly not to use up administrative time on minutes um, and recognize that um, because we record the videos that that is really sort of the fine scale detail of what happens at minutes uh, at meetings that people can go back and look at those. And so what we've been suggesting is very high level um, minutes um, and really focus on where action was taken and where consensus was reached because that's the model that we're looking at. And then one of the things I wanted to put out to you and look for your guidance on um, to further inform the steering committee meeting on Monday is how we deal with public comment. The thought um, from the, the some members to date has been that it is important just simply to note that public comment was received and not to um, and highlight any particular public comment, um, but rather leave that to the video and reference the video. But I, I know that there are pros and cons to that approach, and um, I, I am looking forward to talking it over with the steering committee in more detail to come to consensus, um, as you will, on how we deal with that. But to, for consistency right now, we have not been noting in detail what the public comment was. So I just I want to put that out there for consideration. Um, and also recognize that going forward after the steering committee will use that meeting on Monday to inform, the, inform then some template guidance for minutes and agendas that we'll send out to the committee. So maybe I'll pause there and then I have one other thing to bring up with you all and see if you want to respond um, and have me here and have Chris Campany also who's on the steering committee here and bring forward any comments on um, the pros and cons of public comment being reflected in the minutes, the written minutes I should say. Um, well, any, I, any, go ahead, jump in. Yeah. I'll jump in by saying um, um, I would just like to voice to the steering committee. I think public comments are uh, both important and part of the public record that should be in the minutes, um, understanding that the minutes are going to be very high level, um, major points made. Um, and uh, I appreciate the, the video as being a link. Uh, for more information, but I would recommend, strongly, frankly, recommend that there be some public comment noted in the notes, the minutes. Great, thanks, Sue. Go ahead, Chris. Oops, sorry, I'm too fast with the clicker. Um, yeah, I would, I would concur with Stu, because also with the written minutes, it would be, it's probably gonna be easier to search the, those PDFs if it's gonna be, P or whatever the document form is gonna be for public comment or names or other things if you need to find it faster than video. Um, that's just my experience with other recorded meetings. Um, could always then ref cross reference you know, from the written to the video, but if you want to see it, but that, that'd be my recommendation. Kelly, I think you have your hand up also. Yeah, I, I agree with what Chris said. I, that was my thought as well, is if I wanted to go back and find, oh, what meeting was it when so-and-so said such and such, I, I'd have to be watching a whole bunch of meeting recordings, but if I had the minutes, I could go search through them a lot faster, I think. So yeah, it's high level, but then you could find the one and go back and watch and listen to what they actually said. Yeah, that, that's all really a strong argument for it, the searchability too, so thank you. I'll add that. 
I'll just say that I, I agree. I like the idea of, I appreciate the goal to keep minutes concise and uh, minimize the administrative burden around agendas and minutes. And yet I like, I do like to see some substance in minutes that can help us remember which meeting was which uh, conversation. So I appreciate that comment as well. Um, and in particular comments from members of the public as I think our committee is particularly interested in ensuring that there's strong public engagement and honoring that part of the process. So. Great. Anyone else on that topic before Jane moves on to any other topics? Well, I, I just want to circle back since Amanda Carlson uh, from Capstone is helping us at this point take minutes. I would like to recommend that our committee uh, do perform, ha keep the notes with our minutes at this point until directed otherwise by the steering committee. That sounds great. Okay, sounds great. So, sure uh, so yeah, go ahead, Jane. Thanks. Okay, so um, thank you for that. Um, there, uh, there's a lot of other um, meaty topics for the steering committee to take up, but I think that's one of the first and foremost, of course, being along with um, the con consumption of all the subcommittee's recommendations for final membership on Monday. Um, and then finally, I think um, as you transition talking about nominees, this is timely. Um, I sat in on the cross-sector mitigation meeting earlier and since followed up with um, the co-chairs. Um, who both are strongly supportive of having a just transitions member of their committee. So a liaison, if you will, um, who sits in at the cross sector meeting mitigation subcommittee meetings to go back and forth. And right now um, with the two committees that are um, in service to the five other committees uh, or three other committees, I should say, um, Jared Duval sits on both the science and data and the cross sector, so he's sort of that liaison for the for the science and da data to the cross sector um, and the cross sector because it's going to have the, the biggest task in front of them um, really feels like it shouldn't be like once in a while check ins with just transitions, but an ongoing relationship um, to be informed back and forth. So as you're thinking both about additional membership and thinking about your own capacity, it'd be great to think about perhaps um, someone here who might have capacity to be a liaison with the cross sector mitigation committee, if that feels important or the best way to do it, I should say to you all. Great, thanks Jane. I, I think that's a great suggestion and something we can keep in mind as we're looking at the, um, looking at uh, nominees today, if others agree. Um, I can see some people now, so are others agreeing that 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 there's some value in having, uh, okay, great, excellent. Other topics we should be aware of, Jane, before we dive in? That's it for now. I'm, I'm looking forward to talking about public engagement and how to start that. Excellent, great. So in trying to um, think through the best approach here today, um, so just to kind of walk folks through, bring us up to where we are as of the start of this meeting. Uh, we, uh, we received back a list of um, uh, nominees for the subcommittee uh, based on our first review and the steering committee's criteria. Uh, Sue and I, per our last meeting, looked at that list and then we also uh, based on the last subcommittee's discussion, uh, pulled in some additional uh, folks from the sort of medium high category to, to aug augment that list just a little bit more. We then sent that list out to our subcommittee members and staff um, and assigned um, outreach to those nominees. Um, so, and we also uh, sent along a summary of the just committee, just Transitions Committee Charter um, with a reminder on the criteria and the ask uh, for folks to participate in what it meant to be a member of the subcommittee in terms of time commitment and the work of our committee. So now is the point in time where we are going to come back together and um, I thought what might actually be helpful for this part is to just kind of go one person at a time through were you able to make contact with your folks and sort of just provide a brief summary like who was interested, who was not interested, and any other um, comments based on the criteria that we previously discussed. So I thought that would be the first kind of step in this process. Um, if folks Sarah, that would, yeah. 
I just wanted to add to clarify when we added a few people, it was because there were categories that this group had talked about that were not included in the the most highly ranked, if we want to use that term. Um, specifically, there we didn't really have. Uh, there was a high orientation towards uh, the Chittenden County region, so we wanted to have um, a greater spread uh, in terms of geographic representation, youth. Uh, we There really wasn't a youth um, representative, and so we added one, and there were several to consider. Um, um, was there, oh, lived experience with poverty, we wanted to make sure uh, we had a couple of those. So that was essentially why we added a few more people, just so you know. And there was obviously everyone sees there were terrific, terrific people. So I just wanted to mention that so people understood. Yeah, sorry, I didn't go back through. Thank you to what our subcommittee discussed on criteria, but that's, that's I think, helpful. So if folks agree, then maybe I'll just, um, we can just kind of do a little round robin. Um, I'll start us off and say, um, I gave myself one person because I was working on getting all the information out to you all, and then I thought potentially if folks had trouble contacting people, I might jump in. But um, So I tried to reach out to Abel Luna, uh, who works for Migrant Justice. Um, Senator Rom gave me his contact information. I did send him an email. I wasn't able to connect with him, and unfortunately his phone number was no longer in service. So that's not a great start to this conversation, but I anticipate some others may have had challenges connecting as well. Um, so I, from there, maybe I'll pass it on to Sue. And Sue, you had four people that you were trying to connect with. Right, so I uh, reached out by email and thanks to help from Amanda, we got emails out to everyone, which is Aris, um, Baylan, Beverly, uh, and Bindu. And um, we've heard back from Bindu, who, um, you know, I know is an assistant professor at the Rubenstein School. She's interested, not confident she can commit six hours, um, but really had very little time to respond to the email. I'm willing to give her a call. I have her contact information, so I'm going to talk to her this evening, uh, assuming we want to proceed. Uh, Beverly Little Thunder, who I also know, uh, who is a Native American activist um, and seemed very interested. Um, and I think, uh, Allison, I, Amanda, excuse me, please, uh, I, I looked super quickly at these emails just before the meeting started. So I think I saw an interest, so I'm excited by that. Um, I have to say that someone, uh, I think that Balon is, um, works for the city of Burlington and that she had come to my attention earlier and someone else did reach out to her uh, and learned she may not be available at that level, but I'll try to continue to follow up. And we, I think, didn't hear back from Aris. So that's, so I know one way to reach out. <laughs> we have one, yes, <laughs> uh, which is exciting. Great. Um, and I'm, I'm sharing my screen. I don't know if folks can see that, but I just thought that might be helpful as we talk through. I'll, I can kind of track it in one place so we can be looking at that. Oh, good. Um, Thank you. And uh, I'm sorry, you said that... Um, the woman who works at the at the city of Burlington, she was uh, you weren't able to contact her, or she was a. I missed that part. I emailed everyone. I have not heard back from her, but previous to this whole process, I had heard she'd be awesome, but probably didn't have enough time. So I'll try to validate that. But I am concerned about her time availability, and I haven't heard from Aris, which I, who I hope I do hear from. Okay. Thank you, Sue. Uh, Jennifer, can you jump in? Sure. Um, you know, I just want to say in preface, the, the issue of not having enough time, I'd be surprised if any of us have enough time. So it, like, I, I wonder whether we want to push people and try to get them on even when they say they don't have enough time. Um, and that's just something for us to think about because, you know, it felt awkward for me sending emails saying, can you let me know within 24 hours whether you're willing to commit four to six hours a week for the next six months? Like that was a, a funny thing to try to do. But so I reached out to Michael Dorsey, who is a, a, gun, a gun affiliate up at UVM. He's got tons of experience. He's a business person. Um, um, and and he, he did get back to me be, because I reached out 
um, to the Gund Institute itself after he didn't respond to my email. And he did get back to me, very nice email, but he wasn't, um, he says he doesn't live here anymore. So I was going to reach out to him and see if he'd at least be willing to be in one of those other circles of involvement. Um, if he can't be on the com transition, if he can't be on the committee subcommittee itself, but I would like real, I would really like clarification on whether he can be on and whether I should try to push that or not um, and try to reel him in a little bit. Um, and I have not heard back from um, Carolyn Finney, who is a visiting scholar at of environmental studies at Middlebury. I did email her and I also sent her a phone call. I mean, called her, so I'll keep trying. And Jennifer, I did, we did add, I quickly kind of shot your email to Jane just about as somebody who's not a resident appropriate for the council. And Jane, I think your take on that was, um, Yes, although likely we would need to justify why we weren't otherwise able to have uh, or make a case why someone else who is a resident couldn't play that role. Is that is that the right interpretation, Jane? Yeah, I mean, that was the, I had a conversation with Julie quickly, Secretary Moore, and her, um, her opinion was um, that it's, there's nothing that states that it has to be a Vermont resident, but that with, and by all means, we're trying to accommodate Vermonters because of the way the legislation is, and therefore we should be able to justify that we couldn't find that expertise in the state if we were going to go out of state. He is really uniquely qualified in so many areas and would be a great mm -hmm. embedded member on like the um, technology committee or something like that. You know, he mm -hmm. both, both, both a business um, person and an environmental leader, and so he's got and and lived experience as an African African American, so I yeah I think he provides a huge range of um I don't know just vision I guess great okay well let's come let's come back to um, now but it sounds like a conversation with him might be great anyway because we'd hope to pull him into some role if others agree um. Okay, how about uh, Kelly? Yes, um, let's see, I see the first person up there for me is Kaya. I was not able to connect with her. I used the email that I found in one of the spreadsheets and then today looked for another way to connect. So I was able, I tried her Facebook page, which is sort of, you know, public kind of thing. So we'll see and found another email. So I've reached out to her three different ways and apologized for bombarding her. Um, and I did say, you know, even if I don't hear from you, I'd love to connect um, because we want to try to engage everybody who was nominated. And uh, I also mentioned that our, our official deadline is Friday. So, you know, um, so we'll see. I will keep you all posted if I do hear from her. Um, and then Judy, I was able to connect with her today. She is interested. The one thing that um, that that might be a sticking point is for her, 3.30 to 5.30 is like booked every single day. And I had a feeling that that might be the only time that worked for all of us who are currently on the committee. So um, that was the only real thing. Um, otherwise, in general, the amount of time she said would be fine. She um, really talked about her her unique perspective and how she'd be able to um, talk about the experiences of indigenous people. And she's she's seen a lot in her time um, and her family has been re ha has lived in roughly the same area for 15 generations. So she's really tied to Vermont and has a lot of history to bring to bear. So um, from my conversation with her, I think she'd be also a wonderful asset to our committee. Um, the, the one question would be if if those of us who are already on the committee can't do any other time besides 3.30 to 5.30, then that would be the, the one thing that would make it a no-go. So. Okay. I do think we've held back from setting a regular meeting schedule, kind of wanting to hopefully accommodate our full subcommittee. But yeah, point well taken. Scheduling is going to be fun. Um, how about um, Abby? 
Okay, sure. So I had two. I'll start with the one that I was not able to connect with. So I reached out by email and phone to um, Heiko Schaefer, and I've not heard back uh, from that from them yet. So I, I don't have a sense of their availability or interest. Um, I did have an opportunity to speak with Iris, um, and I'm not sure that I know how to actually pronounce her last name, which I realized after we spoke, I didn't ask her for pronunciation assistance, and I should have. Um, and she is interested, and she's really exciting to talk to. So she is a junior at Essex High School and very engaged in both racial equity and climate change. Um, related projects and has such a strong position on these issues, really excited to be engaged um, parts of so many different student networks. And so one of the kind of high ranking criteria that came um, out of our conversation was her ability to connect with atypical networks um, and lived experience as she is also um, a, a woman of color. So, um, really great and I give her like two thumbs up. That's great, thanks Abby. Um, how about Chris? Chris, are you there? Oh, you're muted. <laughs> no, I still, can you? Hey, here I am, okay, sorry. Too many windows open. Um, so somehow I had missed my assignment, so I'm doing that right now. Oh, okay. All right. Sorry about that, Chris. It's okay. Um, Where, I'll I can just, say something about Virginie, who okay. is actually someone I um, recommended and yep. had a conversation with before all of this. Um, she works with New American. She's um, a staff working on diversity and equity at the... Um, CVOEO, which is mm -hmm. sort of the counterpart to Capstone and Chittenden and Addison and uh, Franklin Grand Isle. Um, she is African of African descent. Um, I think, and I think she'd be interested and an asset. So may, maybe that would be, oh, yeah. Great, Sue, and you, well, you initially nominated her. Were you ever able to connect with her? Yes, she, she and I had a, she had a meeting. She was very excited about the idea. And her boss, Paul, is the person who recommended her to me. So I feel like she, I don't think that she has a background in environmental stuff, but I think she has a depth of experience in people's realities from New American community and others. Okay. So, um, and Chris, I still think it will be great for you to connect with her. And I, I am sorry you missed the email. I've been using people's official state partner emails, I'm happy to try and make a point of using both your regular email and the state partner email, which I think would be fine. That way it's officially still going to the right place, but just also hitting the inbox you, you might use more frequently. Um, so maybe I can, you, we can just follow up afterwards. I can make sure I have that because I, I definitely have Sue's and I'm not sure if I have others. Just so I know, um, when that went out, the the, the assignments, um, did that go out to me like individually, or did that go? Or was that in that big spreadsheet to everybody? I sent it out the the sheet that I'm sharing right now on the uh -huh. screen. I sent that out to our subcommittee directly with the assignments and the summary sheet. So I'm not sure. Because I don't know if I'm, no, this is not for, I don't need to take up the group time. I'm not, I'm trying to figure out if I'm actually getting all the emails to my council email or if I'm just having, for some reason, not able to, not tracking them correctly or something like that. But anyway, I'm not, I promise I'm not a, I'm not a computer Luddite or anything. <laughs> it's not just. You don't uh, sense that you're a hacker either, Chris. So I think it's fine. We can figure it out. So. I think knowing that Sue has had a conversation uh, with Virginie um, and that she's interested, maybe we'll list her as a, a yes, she's, she's saying yes. Um, and then I still think it'd be helpful for you to connect with her, Chris. And, and so then you haven't yet connected with um, Nadia, but we can. Uh, I'll do that right now to multitask. All right. 
Um, okay, I think just to say, um, Sue and I had a conversation. Jean Hamilton is an amazing young woman. Abby Willard also knows her. Um, we've worked with her in different. I've worked with her in a different way than Sue has. We think she's amazing. We also think she was not. She was a nominee for the um, Rural Resilience Committee, which is really actually more her background as well. So. I just sent them an email and said, we really hope that you reach out and invite her. We don't know that she's going to say, yes, she's a very busy person, but if she is willing to participate, we think she should be on your committee, which actually might be a great, um, if we're trying to get some cross um, contamination, <laughs> that's not the right word, but some cross um, uh, membership to the subcommittees, that could be an opportunity. So, um, she, Pollination, say, not contamination, pollination. <laughs> She was just that she was not on there. They have their final list now, and she's not on it. Just so she's you know. Yeah. Okay, so we could still reach out to Jean and see if she's interested. Okay. okay. Um, and then uh, Ross, have you been able to join us? I know you were in testimony this afternoon, but if you are here, anybody see Ross in the attendees? I don't know that he's here yet. Okay. Um, and Liz. Hi, and everyone. Liz so, didn't, oh, thank you. We didn't introduce you last time. We did. It was a, a switch. You're um, replacing um, Carrie, Carrie, mm -hmm. who was mm -hmm. the staff member who was going to be supporting us. And you work with Carrie, and so you're a new staff member. And, and maybe you just want to say a little bit about what you do, and um, and then maybe talk about your outreach. Yeah, absolutely. And that's no problem. I realize we have a lot of work to do and not a lot of time to do it. So I'll just be brief. Um, I am the AmeriCorps member assigned to the Department of Environmental Conservation at the state. And so um, I report directly to Carrie. And so she uh, kind of had me fill her role um, because my background is in environmental justice um, and in urban community development and in urban agriculture. Um, and I'm actually serving this year and then I'll be going to get my uh, master's in public policy. So this is just right up my alley. I'm super excited to be here um, and, and thank you for having me. Uh, I'm from Delaware, not a Vermont native. Um, so new to the state, new to the subcommittee obviously, but I'm super excited to be here and, and hopefully take on, uh, I have, I think probably a greater capacity than a lot of you uh, full-time working folks. So happy to take on as much as I can and, and be help where I can. Um, so that's me. And then as far as the people that I was able to get in touch with, uh, I got lucky. I was able to um, meet both of my uh, nominees. So Kitiara was the first one and she was awesome. She's a stay at home mom by uh, by trade, but she um, is also on the Head Start Policy Council. She's a chair of that council. Uh, she has lived experience as uh, someone in poverty and she also has connections uh, through CVOEO, um, used those resources uh, personally herself earlier in life and then kind of stayed with them through their transition um, and in a leadership role. Um, she has a lot of time and capacity and a lot of energy, I think, and, and again, connections to those atypical networks that I think would be helpful um, to us and really uh, interested and excited to be doing the outreach pieces and uh, I think could really get a feel for um, also the uh, like school system. She has a child who uh, it has a disability, so she's heavily involved in that community and with parent networks um, within the schools where she is. So I think she would be great. Um, and again, with the capacity, that's like a big thing, I know. So that was awesome, just talk to her. And then my other person was Elaine. Um, and she has been around, I guess, for a long time. She has like over 15 years uh, working um, on, in climate and she's right now in Barrie. Um, and she was interested to an extent. I think the capacity thing was a kicker for her. Um, she'll have to get approval from, I guess, her boss in her current position. Um, and she was kind of concerned that we were just 
looking for non-white people to just come and be on our subcommittee, but I think we had a really good conversation um, and she she read the minutes. So that's just a note to the written out minutes. Um, and she appreciated that we explained, you know, we're not looking for non-white people to come in and give them all the work to do. And so I kind of was able to explain that um, based on, you know, our discussion here in the last meeting. So I think she, is interested and, and uh, appreciated the invitation to the table, I think. Um, but yeah, I don't know if she's like the most excited person, but she would be great and she would do, she would do the work. So I think it's a, a, a yes, but depends on the timing. Sarah, you're muted. <laughs> sorry. Uh, I'm sorry, you guys. Um, I was just checking to see if Ross is able to join us yet, but not yet. So I, I sent him an email. <laughs> thank you. No, I mean, I know he's, he's busy. It's not that he's skipping out. He did let us know he had to be in committee this afternoon, so legislative committee. Um, so I think maybe I'll just open it up. We have some folks that I think we'd still love to try and connect with and we felt really crunched for time. We do have a handful of people that I think sound really great. Probably I'm guessing part of what we want to think about is the balance of who's coming in, right? Like if all of our yeses were Burlington, we might want to be like, yeah, we might want like to take a little bit more time to, um, you know, so I think it's hard to do that in this format, but, um, I guess I just want to open it up to subcommittee members. What what do you think you would um, we want to do as a next step? Chris. Can you remind us? Sorry. Oh yeah, go ahead, Jennifer. I was just curious if you can tell us how many yeses we have. Oh yeah, so we have one, two, three, four, five. Oh, you have them right on the sheet. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, no, that's okay. Maybe so I can make it a little bigger too. Sorry, it's not very big. Um. We have one, two, three, four, five, six. Um, a couple of those were a little bit yes, but, <laughs> or yes, maybe, or like the worried about time commitment scheduling. Um, and I don't, and so that could be fine. We could go with that. But I also want to open it up in terms of people looking at this and thinking about the balance and the folks we weren't able to connect with. So thoughts. Um, subcommittee members thoughts there yeah Chris just broadly uh, it would don't do this I, I just it would help if I could see like a, a map of where everybody's from um, I don't think we're really we're probably getting rep representation from you know proportionate representation from based on population of areas but especially the western part of the state it seems like we're pretty not just this committee, but most of the committees um, collectively were pretty slim. But I also know we're running up against time constraints, and and then there are people with expertise and experience that just that it's just not going to be a even geographic distribution. So it's probably as good as we can do, but just but at, le at least just looking, it's feeling like it's not uh, like what's around the eighty-nine and ninety-one corridors. It's feeling like it's not uh super diverse but anyway that's okay no it, it's an important problem that we need we can still focus on it i mean we do have this is what we noticed when we met and that's why we brought some more people on and i did just hear back from ross he wasn't actually he hadn't responded to the email yet so um so we we still have some people from uh, you know there's from rutland um and from hartford uh, I'm just looking at location. That was helpful when you moved the location up. Um, and from Manchester. So I think it's still good to be asking those people because I, I am concerned about the geographic dis uh, distribution. I'm excited. We, we now seem to have youth. We have native uh, peoples, which is wonderful. We have um, uh, a few um, kind of folks from the African and African-American community, I think. And what I'm worried though, we, uh, I don't think we have a disabilities community person representing yet. I'm not sure if we address that in the end of the day. 
Sarah? I'm not remembering. Uh, I know we talked about it. Well, I mean, it's, it's really hard to know, right? <laughs> if people are yeah. living with yeah. people, just like it's really hard to know what people's incomes are. So um, I do think the fact that, um, is it Kitiara, that, how you say her name, that, that she has a child with a disability is, I think, meaningful. Like, um, so I think that's worth noting. Um, I don't actually know where our subcommittees are all located. I think we might have shared this. So, um, I mean, that's worth it. We're thinking about the geographic diversity, Chris and Kelly and Jennifer, if you want to share that. Sure, I had a, I had a comment too. This is Jennifer. Um, one was um, that, except for Chris, I think we're all female. And all the ones who were choosing are also female, which is not unusual in the advocacy community, but it is something I worry about um, because I think men, I don't know. I brought this up yesterday with Sarah. I agree with yeah. you. And, there and was a huge. Oh, sorry. I interrupted. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Jennifer. Keep and for what it's worth, I, li I live in East Montpelier. So I'm part of the 89 corridor, really. Chris, go ahead. You had your hand up. Yeah, uh, yeah. I, um, to the extent that a lot of the problems originate with white men, um, we're also going to be part of the part of solving the problem, speaking especially to other white men. Um, but uh, yeah, I noticed that too. I I don't. I don't know if it's a problem per se, but, um, but you know, I, this, part of what always concerns me in any of these conversations is, um, you know, I don't, I hope we don't have the perception that, okay, we're going to leave it to uh, people who are marginalized in our society to solve these issues. <laughs> um, so hopefully that won't be the case, but I, but I, I was noticing that as well. Amanda, you have your hand raised. Yeah, I just want to mention that I have some uh, perspective I could bring is that I'm from and have many connections and family members in Caledonia and Orleans County that I hope to reach out to as this committee progresses. And I've already tried pulling some of them into the fold, into our committee and others. So that's some experience I can hope to add. Um, Kelly, and also just again, I want to open it up for that broader conversation of, of subcommittee members. What do you think our next steps are? So, Kelly. Well, as far as where I'm from, I or where I live, I'm actually from Delaware, Liz. I'm also from Delaware um, originally, but uh, I live in Swanton now. So, still on that, we're just getting to the other end of the I-89 corridor here. <laughs> Chris, where are you located? Are you down in, in near in Bennington? Is that, or where are you? I'm, Towns, I'm in Townsend with a silent H. Oh my God. How, what? Town, spell it for me. Oh my God. Town, I I town like Pete Townshend, T-O-W-N-S-H-E-N-D. Okay. The silent H, you said that, and it threw me off. I was like, where's that silent H going? Sorry. Um, <laughs> okay. Um, so subcommittee members, I think the question um, up it for is, um, do we want to, um, and, and part of it's looking at this, I'm trying, I know it's in the moment, very much trying to share our thoughts around is, are there other in terms of thinking about the whole of the committee and the sort of representation across the whole committee we're trying to achieve? Or do we want to try to do a little bit more work to reach some of these folks we weren't able to reach? Or do we want to kind of solidify based on the people we were able to reach? So I think for other reasons, but that's I think the question on the table. So anyone want to jump in there? Okay. I'll just. I'd like to recommend that um, I, I certainly want to try to follow up with Bindu and make sure she actually has time. I hope that we can either someone on this call or we can ask Ross to follow up with uh, Hartford select board member Jameson Davis and um, Lee, 
is it Lisa? Where is she? The Rutland. Where's the Rutland? Lisa Ryan. But just this, the geographical thing is the one thing that I feel like it's really important and it seems like we're not distributed well. So that's one thing. But how, what is our total number that, how many people are we actually trying to recruit, let's just say? I think um, 12 is the maximum that we've been told and I think eight to 10 was recommended. So if we have five members now, that means that we're looking for three to seven to add. Okay, and it looks like we have five more, is that right? We have five yeses, one of whom is concerned about time. Elaine. So we have one more yes, uh, Nadia Pabst, uh, uh, Nadia Marquez Pabst has accepted. So uh, she's asking for the next step. Shall I tell her she's a, not, she's a member? <laughs> well, we, we're not there yet. I think okay. it's to assess her interest, um, but that's great to know she's interested. And it sounds like you probably asked her um, if she thought she had time. I don't know if you had all the details of what we're sort of trying to. I did. But anyway, yeah, that's I, great. I noted the four to six hours per week through May, uh, though I said we're also willing to take whatever time we were able to give the effort. So. Well, that makes me feel good because she's Manchester. Yeah, absolutely. Which isn't Bennington, but it's still. <laughs> um... No, but it's what well, it's 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 outside the I ninety one and eighty nine corridor, so that's good. Yep. I'm... I'll just, I was just going to comment for you guys that um, <clears throat> the Rural Resilience Committee um, did get people from sort of the far reaching ends of the Northeast and the Southwest. Um, and so I don't know if perhaps there's just a way to ensure more cross pollination, not cross contamination um, with the Rural <laughs> Resilience Group and ensure that those members help you think about those communities as well. That's right. I think that's a great point, Jane, is that um, we're, we're going to work as part of the whole um, in the council. And so I think uh, we can we can be thinking about that. Um, OK, so uh, others. So that was helpful to weigh in, Sue. Um, Kelly, um, other thoughts about sort of next steps? Um, I am looking at the the numbers. I mean, I guess the, the question is we're we have enough people who are interested that we could completely fill. I mean, right. I think we have. Six or seven um, who definitely are interested, so we could theoretically just say pick those people and then but I but I agree like a little bit more thought is probably a good idea. Um, because there may be some folks who will get back to us tomorrow and say yes, that that would help with our balance. Um, but it, it's hard to know. Great, thank you. Um, Jane, did you have, your, you have your hand raised? Or is that from before? Sorry, that was before. I'll lower. Chris, did you have your hand raised? Or is that from before also? OK. Jennifer, did you want to weigh in on next steps? I don't I don't have anything else to add really than what other people have said. I mean, I guess I, I guess I would caution against moving too quickly. You know, they're already pushing us really fast on this. And like I said, I have one person who would I mean, I have the both of the people who I reached out to would be great members. Um, well, one of them can't, I guess, but um, maybe he can. But the other woman, you know, we I haven't heard from her yet. So um, I guess, you know, I am I am worried that to, you know, so, and this is what Sue talked about at the Climate Council meeting on Monday, right? That the problem with with pushing this so fast is you end up not not making sure you have your bases covered. But maybe there's nothing we can do about it. I'm not sure. So as a matter of process and kind of keeping us moving forward in this thinking, I want to suggest maybe um, are there folks in this list as we look at it that people feel strongly about that like we know they're willing and we know we want to put forward their names, right? So that's one question. And then the other 
is as you look at this list, are there people we weren't able to connect with that you would like us to really, like Sue said, I really, Sue's like, I really want to see if we can connect with Jameson Davis and see if he's willing. Are there people on this list, and I'll highlight them, that we really do want to try and connect with before we close the door? So two questions for each committee member. People you still think we should make an effort to connect with. People who've already said yes, so you feel like yes. Can we just kind of do a quick round robin on that? And I'll start by saying I would really, um, I would really like to say uh, yes to Iris and uh, Kitiara. I think are going to be great additions. Um, maybe some others as well, but those two stood out in my mind as I was really excited to see that. So, um, so I'll just name that, and then um, how about I toss it over to Sue? Um, well, I'm excited to include Beverly Little Thunder. Um, <clears throat> I'm, 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 and I'm, I'm actually really excited to include Virginie. Um, and I'm starting to wonder if, you know, the folks who are kind of like, I'm not sure I have enough time. Maybe that's a way to, as much as we'd love to include them, to sort of realize, well, then maybe we put them in that next tier of, uh, of of focus and not this really intense time consuming part. So that leads me to maybe I do want to check in with Bindu, um, but if she has a question about time, I'm going to probably say, I think what we want to do is have you at that next tier of engagement. It's just a way of thinking. Okay, great. Chris. Um, I don't know her, but I'm gonna, I would I would recommend Nadia just because her her field and background is so different from everyone else that we have, um, and plus plus the geography I think that would be helpful. Um, so I just wanted to add that. I I if I can add a friendly amendment, she seems like somebody who might be great also on the cross cross sector group, and I wonder if part of the ask could be if she's um, could be a good member for that committee as well, just given her background, which I think, if I remember correctly, besides being a regulatory attorney by day, is also around um, vehicles and transportation. And so I just think that could be an interesting. No, I, uh, I, can, I, can I just offer a response real quick? Yeah. I, I don't disagree. The only thing I'm thinking is, is having somebody like that actually on the Just Transitions Committee um, we have a lot of folk who are, uh, who I think, you know, kind of just transition, just transit, it's their, it's their expertise or business or point of advocacy. Um, not that it, it just seems like, um, having somebody who, um, and not just her, I'm just looking at people who, uh, are in kind of the, the the business world or what have you would be good to have on this committee too. Um, yeah. yeah I it, it, I anyway, understand that the ask was thinking about somebody who might be willing to participate in both committees, so she could be in our committee but would be actively participate. Is that did I misunderstand that ask, Jane? Nope. That you're correct. They just so the sub they, that subcommittee finalized their picks from the nominations, but they're looking for you to advise them on someone who could sit in with them, but also be on your committee. Great. So hopefully, Chris, that clarifies. Sorry. Got it. Um, I have not replied. Just saying, so you know, I have not replied back to her yet. What I'm, I'm she's asking. I'm by when are we making final decisions? I'm, is it going to be early next week? Is that what I'm remembering? Our job is that we're trying to finalize our list of recommended right. committees, and then I think that ultimately the steering committee is making, or the council the steering committee is making final. Um, not that they're going to push back on us, but I, I'm not sure that we're the decision maker. I think we're just finalizing a slate. Right. I think that's the case. That's why I was saying. I think we're meeting Monday, if I'm remembering correctly. Sorry, I got so many meetings. I, just, I think that's right. Yeah. Great. 
So, yes. um, Kelly, how about you? Do you want to weigh in, Kelly, in terms of these two questions around folks that you want to be like, yes, and folks that you want to be like, let's please still try and reach them? So having, I don't personally know any of them. I've spoken, I spoke to Judy because that was my assignment. Um, uh, I did, I mean, and the, the scheduling thing, she was really very interested. It was just one of those things where I was like, if that's, if this is the only time we can meet because of us five, then that might be a problem. Um, so, I, I mean, I do think she would be uh, wonderful and have a great perspective. Um, uh, and I'm just looking at mostly who's, I agree with Sue that, you know, if someone has questions about whether they can do the time commitment, that might, that, that, that would be, I mean, my experience of saying, oh, it's okay, we, and then someone who's already iffy about time commitment is less likely to really be able to do it. So I, um, same would go with Elaine, um, because again, that, that to me is a sort of a concern that that person, if they have that issue, that that's not going to work out for them to really participate fully. Um, and I'm looking through, I think I, I think I just agree with what we have here. Um, looking through the people we haven't connected with, looking through the people who we have who say yes, and then the recommendations to follow up with a couple others seems good. It's it's tough to get a really full picture here by like the very small amount of information I have about everybody, but um, okay. yeah, but no, I mean, I, I think where we are going feels good. I don't have any problems. <laughs> Great. Um, and Chris, did you have your hand up? Did you want to? jump in again? No. Okay. <laughs> okay. So it sounds like, and I wasn't quite sure there by your comment, Kelly, if you were saying yes, Judy, or like, yeah, she'd be good. And if not, that's okay. Oh, I think she'd be great. And I, but I, I it's just, the only thing is that if, and this is where I, you know, when she told me that this time slot that we're in right now is the only time slot she can't do. Right. I had a concern that this time slot is the only time slot that the five of us who are already seated on the committee can do. Um, right. That's the only thing. But so if the time is not an issue, the, the actual um, time that our meetings take place is not during this time frame, she'd be able to do it. She's She has enough time in her week and she was, I think would be, um, I, I, think she'd be I think she'd be great. I mean, my conversation with her was wonderful and I think she would, um, bring a lot to our table. Great. Okay, so and then I, I would just weigh in. I think um, Eris Garcia would actually be great. That would be sort of a um, also a different network and I think she actually has a background around organizing as well, which I think would be kind of um, a unique talent set to bring. So I'd, I'd love to sort of still see if we hear from her, if people would be willing. So it looks like um, if I can summarize where I think we're at, <laughs> I think, um, but this is, we have one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six people that we would say yes. And we have four people that we would still like to understand if they would be a yes. And we can have up to seven. So we can move forward with these six people as nominees and perhaps our communication to the steering committee is um, we still would like to um, have the ability if one of these other four people is interested to add them to our subcommittee at a later date. Um, what do folks think about that? Yeah, I want to just ask the question, do people feel that we will be able to find a different time than the three to five time slot that we seem to have been going with of late? because uh, that's the issue with Judy. Um, so that it's a tricky one. Obviously, she brings a lot. And I, I sort of worry that I couldn't do daytime, but I might be able to do evening. Oh, you just muted yourself, but you were saying evening. Yeah. 
I agree. I think I, it's going to be hard for me to find another time during the daytime, but I am open to being in the evening or even weekend hours just in the spirit of true public engagement and what this committee is about. Um, so I'm open to that. Chris, Kelly, Jennifer. Scheduling. Because if it really is a no deal, it has to be during this time slot that we should we should be clear on that. So um, I don't have a lot of control over my schedule. So it's really the end of the day. It seems to be the time that I have the, the least number of requests for my time. Um, I could do evenings. I would rather not do weekends, but I would do it through June. <laughs> okay. So let's say no weekends, but evenings. I just want to honor that. Some of us aren't very good at saying no, so let's just honor that I heard a no on the weekend. Kelly Thanks. and Chris. Go ahead, Kelly. Oh, um, my schedule is quite flexible. As evenings get later, I have a young child, so that can sometimes run into bedtimes, but um, until about 7 o'clock is doable for me. Chris? Um, I, I can do evenings just... Uh, uh, being a planner, we have a lot of evening meetings um, and not always on the same schedule. So, uh, but, but I'm open to that. Okay. Can I so just, can I just, yeah, I just ahead. want to clarify it. Was it literally 3.30 to 5 or 5.30 that she couldn't do it? Or was it like 3.30 to 6.30 or like, what was the? I did clarify it's 3.30 to 5.30. So um, I initially had 3.30 to 5 because that's the time of our meeting today. But um, it's until 5:30 that she tends to be booked. Okay. Yeah. So I would, I would I'd like 5:30 to 7 would be great. But just okay. putting that out there. But I am flexible at night. Okay. No, I want to honor that Kelly has kids, so 7 o'clock sounds like our cutoff period, and I think that's totally reasonable. Also, I turn into a pumpkin after seven after a long day. So. <laughs> um, Okay, so we're open to that. So what Sarah only has three children. <laughs> <laughs> they used to be young and go to bed at seven, no longer. Um, so uh, it, let's. So what do folks think about my proposal that we now have these six yeses that we move forward as a slate, and we still try and contact these four folks we've identified, and we say to the steering committee, we still may bring forward one final nominee. I support that. Okay. Chris, Kelly? Okay. Yeah. All right, great. Ex excellent. It took a while to get through that, a little longer than I had hoped, but I think that was a really thoughtful conversation, and it's really hard because hopefully one of the things we were hoping to connect with people about, if I want to, you know, back up was, like, what do you think we should be working on in the Just Transitions Climate Committee. And so I just want to encourage folks, if you haven't been able to connect with people, it's still worth connecting with them. I think that wasn't our, our intent is to use this as a moment around engagement. So if folks agree, I think it still is part of our homework assignment to try and make these connections and have conversations, even if we um, are saying at this point in time, we had to finalize our subcommittee nominations, but still would really love to talk with you about your interest in engaging in our future work and hear from you what you think we should be working on. Do folks agree that that is still our assignment? Great, excellent. Okay, I'm gonna try and stop sharing my screen. And, uh, okay, excellent. So uh, we're a little bit behind, but only by a few minutes. And I think the next topic was to talk, and I think we have plenty of time. I think the next topic then, because of our revised agenda, was to talk about um, public engagement a little bit. and. Um, Maybe Jane, I'll start with you because you had sort of wanted to dive into this piece and then um, just maybe you can lay it out for us and others can fill in and we can go from there. Sarah, oh. just really quickly before we jump forward is you laid out four people that needed to contact, but we don't have the assignment on who's contacting who. Oh, and I'm a, I'm a little, or did yeah, you do that? I'm assuming it's the same people that we had assigned the first time that already reached out to them, but I will. Well, here's Ross, great. Yeah, I will follow up. Oh, hi, Ross. Um, I will follow up with uh, with those folks, and 
if they're not able to, I'm happy to take on trying to connect with these, those people, since I didn't assign myself any the first time. So, Ross, I don't know that you were trying to say something. We're, we're, we're sort of, if you have something to add, uh, unmute, and if not, we'll move on. All I want to say was my apologies. I, I missed something in the emails, and um, I, I'll call them tonight. Okay, great. And so, Ross, just not quite sure when you joined us, so just to recap, yeah, I think we're just wanting to, those are still two people that we're very interested in seeing if they want to participate on the committee. So it is still the same ask, even though we're kind of past our time frame. So, okay, great. Um, all right, so uh, Jane, take it away. Well, I, I don't feel um, prepared to talk completely about public engagement and hopefully you all will do that. But I did want to just suggest that um, Commissioner Walk um, as and well as some of his staff had suggested to me um, that I bring to you all um, the idea of using the full suite of nominations um, as a starting point for public engagement and somehow using um, the nominations that we have, those 267 and now, you know, the roughly 250 who won't be selected for a subcommittee membership, to start using that um, list as a way to have community advocates in getting out the word at a more local level about the work happening at the Climate Council. So I just wanted to flag that as sort of this suite of people that may not be representative, obviously, of all the communities that you want to reach out to, but just recognizing that that is um, an, a resource perhaps um, for you all to use as you start to think about public engagement and what that means. And then I'll also just reflect um, that um, for you to while while doing more and good public engagement um, at the onset, um, I, cer I certainly think everybody um, on the steering committee and on the council welcomes that. I just want to have you guys frame the conversation about what you're statutorily required to do versus what you're doing because it's the right thing to do um, to get the best plan possible. So that, that probably is something to just look at um, because um, closely around framing public engagement and recognizing what has to happen statutorily for the plan this fall um, and what is um, going above and beyond. So I just thought I'd kick that out there too because that's been thrown back a little bit too. Um, so I'll leave it at that and help, help, happy to help guide, help offer any other comments around resources available to you all, the contract, the RFP. Thank you again um, for your input on that, um, what it's lacking on and happy to like chime in whenever it's appropriate as you start to dive into the conversation. Okay. Thanks, James. I do think um, to the extent that I have the charter description for our committee and folks have that, I, I'm not sure that I, um, and on honesty, recently anyway, uh, have read the statute to understand what's different in the statute than the charter. Mm -hmm. so I think that if you could send that to me, I can make sure that, maybe, or maybe you send it out to the subcommittee and we can be mm -hmm. sure to be looking at that. Yeah, happy to do that. I, I don't, I don't want to oversimplify it, um, but um, after I said that, I'm going to oversimplify it. <laughs> um, the statute essentially speaks to this committee ground truthing and testing all of the strategies and policy and suggestions that come out of the other committees to ensure that they are just and fair and equitable. It does not speak specifically to um, sort of, you know, how to do that outreach and in reach to all the other um, to the communities ahead of those strategies um, to engage with um, to help formulate the ideas um, put forward in the plan. Again, that could just be simply a shortcoming of the way the statute was written um, if we really want to find um, a path forward that is equitable and involves the full breadth of Vermont public, so. Thanks. Um, Sue, did you wanna, you had some thoughts around this in terms of the time frame and the RFP. Do you wanna jump in? Well, I think what, um, what I articulated at the council meeting was simply that you know, the RFP is a great RFP in terms of outreach and campaign once the big ideas are kind of at, at the forefront. And I am suggesting that we may miss uh, and may be doing a disservice to this effort if we wait until then 
to then just sort of, you know, get some feedback. Um, because I think the folks that we're trying to touch are people that haven't been a part probably of this conversation historically, and that this is an I, a moment to try to do things a little differently. So I'm suggesting that um, that we see, and it seemed like um, um, Secretary Young was open to at least having the um, steering committee, committee consider maybe in addition to J June, we do some more intensive sort of just outreach and engagement around. And, and the idea also was supported by uh, Commissioner Tierney to do focus groups. Um, focus groups is more learning about, um, and I think incredibly important. In addition, I feel like with these new members of this committee, we're reaching out intentionally to new networks that maybe haven't really had the time to engage in what is this Global Warming Solutions Act. So uh, sort of preparing the soil essentially for the likelihood that we're going to put some seeds for them to try to germinate. And if the soil isn't ready, the whole thing may not uh, take root. So um, it's really that preparing the soil, just doing first time engagement with many communities, I think, on this. So that that was the idea uh, that I thought it might make sense for us to come up with a, a little proposal for the next quarter to do some different kind of strategies to reach out with just basic information about what this Global Warming Solutions Act, why, you know, the information in a digestible form of the urgency, the data we saw you know, from EAN, uh, lots of stuff that we've been learning if we could synthesize it. So that's my idea. Um, I'm interested, and I, I, to advance the idea, if folks are interested, I don't think we can do it right now, but I'd be willing to have a little mini group sort of brainstorm a little bit so that the next time we meet, we might actually be able to present some ideas to see if this group would like to take those and others to the steering committee soon, you know, next week. Um, I, yeah, I, I agree. I think there needs to be some education probably, and I think that'd be very helpful because people probably aren't fully aware of any of what we're doing. I think a lot of people probably have no idea. Um, so what, what's our task? What are we, what are we trying to do as a council? And also, um, some education about the policy making process what does that look like and and I think because I think a lot of people don't really know what's going on at the state house and so um, I would include that as well I and I think it's sort of like a marketing and education outreach to as you said get make sure that 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 soil is fertile and that people are aware of what's going on thinking about it and then they may have some feedback about you know well, how will this impact me and, and be able to engage in that dialogue? Great, others also I would invite staff if you have some thoughts around this. Okay, well, I'll add, I really like the idea. I think, Sue, I really like the analogy that it's just making the soil, just getting the soil ready. It's just like people don't even know that this council is happening. And I love the idea of always using, you know, having some questions that are just really salient for people to help them engage, right? Because otherwise it's like this thing that's this other thing that's this weird bureaucratic process making decisions about my life. And, um, and so I love the idea of having a small group kind of think about what would that look like and maybe bring it back to our um, next subcommittee member. I don't know if that's kosher, Jane, if, or kosher is not the right word, sorry, apologies. I don't know if that's appropriate um, to um, have a little subgroup kind of work on that and come back to our subcommittee, is that all right? Yeah, um, and I would just obviously, if you have a quorum present, um, which at this point would be three, you would have to have it publicly warned and agenda, all that fun stuff. So if it was just two of you, you wouldn't have to do that. I'll just say that. Um, and then I'll and and knowing that you're going to bring it back to the subcommittee for a rich discussion, maybe two of you makes the most sense, and then you wouldn't have to deal with the administration. I'll also just say I think the timing of it is good. Like, if, you know, we have we have received the million dollar budget adjustment. 
um, which essentially um, based on all of the money we've received, the $1 million and the previous 450,000, I think the rough number in the budget is roughly 800,000 for technical services, which means the like science and analysis of the climate action plan. But um, how, whether or not we use all of that and if money is available, like I, I keep encouraging um, the other subcommittees too. you know, this is sort of a once in a lifetime with that much money to do ground laying work for the climate action plan going forward. We're never going to get one point four and a half million dollars again. Um, and so it's like now is the right time to use that money wisely for services that make the most sense, um, whether it's the scientific analysis or to start with public engagement. So I think if there's, you know, if we don't have enough money or don't have the right services lined up right now through the RFP, then perhaps there's a chance to do another RFP specific to public engagement or an amendment with the contractor, figure out something to do something right. Great. So thank you. So keep in mind, there's some there's some money flowing and we, we might be able to tap that to, to provide some support. Yes, Liz, go. I just wanted to say um, in response to the possibility of money left over that we would want to spend if compensation for public engagement and participation is a possibility. I think that's a really good incentive for people that don't necessarily, uh, you know, share their voice or their opinion. And also that could come in the form of like childcare or paying people for their time because um, not everyone can just take the time out of their day and, and come to a meeting and give their two cents. But I think a lot of people, those are the people that we maybe want to be hearing from. Um, so just keeping in mind compensation for that, if it's possible. Great. So I'm going to make a suggestion because we're, I haven't done a good job keeping us on our agenda. So I just want to kind of like pull together. If um, subcommittee, would we like to, Sue is willing to take us on uh, do some thinking. Maybe there's another subcommittee member that wants to meet with her and definitely staff would not upset the quorum <laughs> question. So uh, like Liz or another staff member that might be willing to join in that conversation um, with a goal that um, bring back to our next meeting some ideas around what early, I'll call it early engagement looks like. Um, I would say um, maybe to be more specific, like what would be some specific strategies or tactics you guys might want to put on the table um, that can include things like Liz has just mentioned right around, you know, how to be successful, you know, incentives or other approaches. I think part of it, I would have an ask that's not just, um, you know, how we would do it, but what would we be asking people? Like what would, what that to me is always like a key piece of engagement is not just the medium or the method but like the, the what and um so and maybe just put together a few ideas to bring back to this group next week um do people like that idea and does anybody want to join you in that work this is jennifer um i just the thing that occurs to me is that i feel like um those extra committee members would be really helpful in doing this what we're talking about doing right now in terms of that outreach um, and I, like, you know, like we've talked about, we are a pretty homogeneous group right now. I agree. So I wonder whether, I mean, maybe, I, I was thinking Sarah, you and I could talk about whether there are things through government that we can do, or maybe we can think on our own and then also bring in people who are new committee members for some of this. I don't want to. I don't want to hold it up, but I just feel like I don't have the perspective to yeah. think about. Like I just maybe I can suggest that this is just a sort of a one-time homework assignment for this week, rather than sort of creating a subgroup that's going to keep working on this. And that the goal is to give us something concrete to jumpstart the conversation next week, um, mm -hmm. as opposed to. And so maybe if I sort of add that friendly amendment to the proposal, does that feel better to you, Jennifer and Chris, is, rather than thinking this is, the, they're bringing us a fully fleshed out plan that, it, you know, we're moving forward, but just kind of jump starting that conversation. Yeah, that's fine. I, I, I'm not, I'm not saying we shouldn't do it. I'm just saying, I think we'll get more perspectives if better perspective, better sense of what we need and want with other people. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm in full agreement there. 
Is that sound good to you? Okay. Does anybody want to join Sue in that work? I would love to. Yeah, I'm happy to. Just let me know when. <laughs> Great. Okay. Um, I think so. <laughs> um, can you send me the invite and I'll let you know what the time, what my timing looks like, depending on when you're scheduled the discussion. But we don't want three, right? Oh, that's right. <laughs> no, that's Never fine. Mind. Liz is not a subcommittee member, so that she doesn't count towards the quorum. Oh, right. So. Yep. Sorry. Okay. That's the benefit of staff. <laughs> okay. All right. Great. Um, so I'm going to, I think we have, if I can just summarize, because I want to move to public comment, that feels like an important piece, but we did need to talk briefly about our goals for the next meeting. It sounds like this will be a great topic for our next meeting. It sounds like also we should go ahead and move forward. Jane, maybe we're wait, waiting for confirmation after the steering committee member in terms of inviting other our nominees to participate next week, or we should go ahead and invite them. Maybe you can clarify that for me. That's a good question. Um, I, are you scheduled to meet on Tuesday again? Thursday. Oh, yeah. Thursday. Okay. I'm not quite. I was like thinking, oh, if it's Tuesday, you're going to have a fast turnaround. Um, You'll you'll find out confirmation on Monday, I imagine, from the steering committee, but I don't think it would be out of line to invite them now and suggest that final approval is coming on Monday. But knowing people are busy, it's good to get it on their schedule. Great. Um, excellent. So let's. So I think that will be part of our next meeting as well. Is just bringing them into the fold, and I think those two things together continuing to talk about public engagement and how and bringing these new folks into the fold will be um, and then trying to start with moving forward with a new schedule and we know that our next meeting is going to be challenging for um, Judy uh, right and so um, maybe in if I, I'm happy to do the follow-up to those nominees that we have maybe if I'm, I'm not sure I have everybody's email so Maybe I'll just do a follow-up email to the subcommittee to make sure I have the contact information for our nominees. I can do the invitation to our meeting next week. Um, and uh, and for Judy, I'll just make sure she knows that that was already scheduled, but if she could let us know her availability. Does that make sense? Yeah, Kelly, go ahead. Um, it just occurred to me, we may have other people who have a very specific conflict and can't do evenings or something. So we, we may have to go back to the drawing board and say, okay, these these 10 people can all meet at a similar time. These other people can't. And so it may all sort of come back to <laughs> scheduling in the yeah. end. We have to be so prepared think, for that. So, oh, sorry. Yeah, I think we also narrowed in that our openings are really late afternoon or um, early evening. So I can put that in the outreach to folks. Um, OK. Um, great, and so I'm going to turn it over to public comment. I, I really apologize. I'm trying to get in the groove on setting these agendas and keeping us moving, and um, hopefully we'll get a little better in honoring our agenda times. But I'm going to open it up for public comment if folks want to raise their hands, or I'm happy to call on you. Uh, yeah, uh, DL. Uh, Donna, go ahead. Hi, thank you. Um, this has been really interesting to listen to and, and definitely a perspective that um, that you don't see very often. Um, but then I, I've got some perspectives that are different than what you've been talking about, and I'm not sure where those are being addressed in the Climate Council. And I wrote these down because I tend to have these fleeting thoughts and if I don't write them down, I forget them. So, um, but, um, you know, in terms of just transitions, um, I've, I've been paying some attention to the cross-sector mitigation subcommittee, and there are just lots and lots of people from the fuel services industries who are trying to get on that committee, you know, um, and, it think, and it seems to me it, that this committee may be the one that they might want to participate in because you know they're going to have to be dealing with just transitions you know out of their current work to some other slightly different type of work potentially and not really sure where that's being covered um 
the whole education and training piece of it, you know, it's like, you know, yeah, you can say, oh, we're going to weatherize, you know, we're going to, you know, we're going to weatherize an extra, you know, 10,000 houses a year, but we don't have people here that can do it. So that whole education and training piece, I don't know where that's being covered. Um, and then the, the low income weatherization programs, I've been, you know, talking with, uh, Scott Campbell, who's, you know, in the legislature and really trying to get some recognition that, you know, the way we're funding low income weatherization is completely inadequate. I mean, just it, it doesn't even come close to meeting the needs and it's and it's just not paying for a lot of measures that are desperately needed uh, in low and, you know, at some point, moderate income housing. It's just this work just isn't happening right now. So that, that I just really like to know if that, if, if you don't see that as part of your, you know, of, of just transitions. Thanks, Donna. I appreciate that. And um, I don't, I don't know if you joined our, our previous meetings, but our office, uh, my day job is as the director of the state office of economic opportunity, which administers the low income weatherization program. So thanks for that shout out there. Um, I'll say, I think what I understand, and I'll look to Jane to confirm it just as a, cause you did ask a clarifying question there, which I think is worth answering is that our committee's charge is not necessarily to make specific recommendations but to instead um, the other committees which are coming up with the recommendations to ensure that what they're recommending is taking into account these issues around equity that you started to raise, which I think are really important, and to give them some tools around, um, around incorporating that lens into their work. So, Jane, is, am I correct in terms of like um, our committee and how we intersect with the rest of the council? Yeah, I think you did a nice job explaining it, Sarah. Thank you. And thank you, Donna, for the comments. Yeah, thank okay. you for that comment. I, I really appreciate that. Well, I just wondered, you know, is there an ability to be more proactive? Because, you know, I think they're going to go certain directions based on sort of technological areas. I know weatherization is a huge piece of it, you know, and as you go and do outreach, um, you know, with with the communities that you're that you're reaching, um, it's you know, it's like that's going to be a big piece of it for sure. Um, and, you know, I'm just I'm just curious. It's like, how do you reach out to people without having some without having some fairly solid ideas of, about what kind of programs, uh, you know, I mean, you sort of need to have something to comment on to get comments, you know, whereas if you just, you know, open up and say, oh, what do you need? Um, that might be interesting, but um, you know, I don't see any way to funnel those funnel those suggestions back to the mitigation committee either. It's just I don't know. I just <laughs> it just it just strikes me as a difficult task that you have, um, you know, trying to react all the time and not not be proactive. Thanks, Donna. I I, mm -hmm. um, I want I see Matthew Berkey raised your hands. So I want to call on Matthew. Hi, thanks. Can you hear me? Yes. OK, great. Thanks so much. Uh, and I really appreciate all of your work. Um, I want to commend you first on the group that you pulled together. Uh, you've got an outstanding selection of people, and that's that's great that so many people are willing and uh, interested in this work. Um, so following on Donna's comment, just transition to me also really means like a focus on work and jobs. Um, like if you look at what actually just transition the experience of, over many decades in many places, it really is about the connection of the labor movement and the environmental movement. And it's really about the, the centering on workers and their communities. And that's not to say since then it's really evolved and enlarged appropriately so to really address like racial justice issues, the role of indigenous peoples and so on. But at the same time, you don't want to lose that core focus going forward equity has to really have fundamentally as a piece work and jobs and what and and including people in this transition through their day-to-day -day work right so i'm just wondering to the degree you've considered that centering on that in terms of 
watching what the other committees are doing, as you're just talking about, and making sure you're asking the questions about what kind of jobs are being created, what quality of jobs, and for whom. And then in addition, in terms of the people that you are uh, uh, selecting to, to invite in, have you really made an intention, a strong intention of reaching out to labor and union to have representation on this subcommittee? Thank you. Thanks, Matthew. You asked a lot of really important questions right there for us to continue to consider. Um, subcommittee, we're at time, but in respect to our going over, not allowing the full amount of time for public comment, I, I hope folks are in agreement that we can provide an additional five minutes for that. Okay, great. Um, Jack Cushman. Yes, thank you, and I'll be very brief. Um, I would like to endorse what Matthew just said and remind you that the very term just transition came out of the International Labor Organization, that its incorporation in the Paris Agreement is explicitly about providing good uh, green jobs for people who are displaced by the necessary transformation of our society to a non-carbon society. And that this is, of course, only half the coin, but I would strongly urge you, just as the Essex process did, to reach out and incorporate people from the labor movement, um, including people like farm workers who may be from marginalized sectors in our dairy industry, and that um, speaking as a, a member of the environmental community, the Blue-Green Alliance sees ourselves in the same boat, and we know we can't succeed if we don't have the support of workers. So I, I would just strongly uh, underpin that your membership should att attempt to reflect that. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I think it's challenging to um, reflect everything in a small subcommittee, but as this group has mentioned in the past, I really appreciate your comments. You've given us a lot to continue to think on and, and incorporate into our thinking around engagement and, and those um, concentric circles of, of engagement. So thank you both, or thank you all three of you. Any final comments? And so I apologize, I have to hold back on commenting on everyone's comments, so I'm going to get better at that. Um, any other public comments? Okay, great. Then we'll call it a day. Um, we have some good action items for follow-up. We do have our next meeting scheduled for next Thursday. Um, and if folks, I just want to remind you, if you have a personal email that you want to also be used in addition to your state email for official, for, for communication, for um, ease, please send that along. That would be really helpful. All right, great. Thank you, everyone. Have a great, great evening. Thank you. Thanks.